and say something about Generation X. Uh, Xers have a checkered reputation. One of the reasons they don't like names and why someone else had to name them, it actually it was Doug Couplin who was an Xer, but it's an identity hiding label, X. And part of it is because they don't think that their generation as a whole is going anywhere. So it's sort of like I'm not the member of the same generation as this person right beside me, right? Um, we also call them the America's 13th generation. They are literally the 13th in a row since the first U.S. generation of Sam Adams and Benjamin Franklin. We also call them 13 because the number conjures up some of the bad luck and ill timing of their life cycle. I mean, after all, when Generation X first came along, the early 1960s, it was a time when childhood was sinking to the very bottom of society's priorities. Families were beginning to break up. Schools didn't seem to function very well anymore. Um, uh, polls showed that having kids was not so important as living the good life. Certainly, uh, parents increasingly said they no longer wanted to stay together for the sake of their kids. And the entire culture turned anti-child. I remember at the time I was growing up in California, there was zero population growth. And I remember all these ZPG stickers, you know, things like, you know, none is fun, right? Jesus was an only child, stuff like that. I remember that. Um, <laughs> And not only were kids a nuisance, they were bad for the planet. And one way I like to sum up sort of the anti-child animus of the entire time that the Gen Xers were growing up is by showing you something that I call a brief chronology of the evil child movie era, right? <laughs> Rosemary's Baby, Damon, Exorcist, they all had spin-offs and sequels. This was the most profitable genre of Hollywood movie, exactly coinciding with the early childhood of Generation X. And when they weren't monsters, there were annoyances, like in Kramer versus Kramer. Do you remember that? They were horribly bratty kids. Have, has any of you recently gone back and seen Willy Wonka? That is a painful movie to watch. Just painful. Why would anyone have a kid like that, right? Uh, or, or Tatum O'Neill in Paper Moon. These were tough kids. You, know, you didn't want to hug these kids. <laughs> and that was by design. Because the design was to raise up kids. You remember, childhood had becoming more indulged for boomers, but it was totally hands-off for Generation X. The idea is in, a, in an era when we're all going to be self-actualized individuals, kids, like everyone else, should be able to just handle things on their own. They have a problem, give them a latchkey guide or a self-care guide. Give them Judy Bloom, right? Just, just explain to them how horrible the world really is, right? But I mean, that was, that was considered good for kids. And in fact, when a lot of people ask me, I go into the workplace and they say, you know, we have generations that go along in the get along in the workplace. Why is it these Gen Xers are so, so free agent-like? You know, they just don't commit themselves to the group. It goes back to childhood experience. That's the way Xers were raised. And when uh, Xers came out into the economy and into college in the 1980s, we started to hear a lot of disappointment. I mean, from these childless devil movies to, you know, disappointment in the 80s about the product of our educational systems, how little they read, how little they voted, how little they, they uh, uh, you know, were interested in civic affairs, how greedy they were, all of this stuff. A kind of a negative reputation around uh, Generation X it kind of evolved from that in young adulthood. I often point out to boomers, who are usually the first to condemn Generation X, that they have huge positive attributes of this generation which have gone neglected. Um, I sometimes tell boomers when they entered the workforce, what did productivity do, right? What has it done with Xers? It's gone back up again. Uh, Xers really, more than anything else, represent a generation of extreme individual creativity and resilience. After 9-11, everyone was talking about the resilience of America. Well, which generation do you think really showed that resilience? I don't think boomers. I think it's, I think it's the who moved my cheese generation. I think. I think it's Generation X. I mean, who was most likely in those Twin Towers at that hour of the morning? Who was in that flight from Pittsburgh? Who was in that wing of the Pentagon? Who was shipping out a couple of weeks later to Afghanistan, you know, getting married, signing their wills? This is Generation X. It can take anything you give it. Uh, hugely positive attributes about Generation X. Uh, and let's face it, every generation is what it has to be. And this is what Gen Xers had to be. I would just to actually illustrate generational change, this is a very famous uh, survey done by UCLA Austin. Um, two, uh, the most famous two questions they've asked since the late 60s is, what's the most important thing for you, right, as a, as a college freshman? To be um, very well off financially or to develop a meaningful philosophy of life? Well, as you can see, when boomers were freshmen, it was over two to one, meaningful philosophy of life, right? And it's totally switched. 
you know, two to one the other way around ever since, which says something about how Xers feel they ought to look at life, or at the very least, how they feel they have to look at life. Um, you can see Xers have had a huge impact on marketing. I think you'll all agree. Some of the stuff that early on made fun of boomers, you know, why ask why, all that stuff. This is a generation that believes in the sound bite. Remember Eddie Murphy, read my lips. Xers believe sound bites work because they provide accountability. After all, it was read my lips that cost President Bush Sr. the presidency if he had written a 50,000 word issue paper on when he would or would not raise taxes. Do you think anyone would have cared? No. Sound bites. Sound bites provide accountability. Notice the constant uh, appearance today in the young adult pop culture of words like reality, survivor. It says something about this generation's persona. It says something about kind of how they feel they have to experience life and deal with life. Generations in the workplace, coming of age initiation, long boom in culture wars, maximum individualism, small and simple, get rid of the subtext, it's just a job, it's not a career, right? Work isn't me, it's just something I do to get a life, it's not my life. Uh, it's interesting, so many differences in the way Xers view work as opposed to boomers. Xers actually think that the purpose of work is to is to you know, do more for less, rather than just do everything better. You know, that's the boomer wants to do everything better, really into the work ethic. Xers are into the market ethic, you know? Do more for less. If you can get out earlier, do it. Practical, efficient, perceptive, positive reputation, negative reputation, rootless, mercenary and caring, maybe rootless, maybe uh, uncommitted is a word that's often used. Um, here are some of the things that we often, when we talk about Xers in the workplace, I'm either a free agent or a slave, right? Never imagine that an Xer belongs to your organization. They just happen to contract with you. They just happen to work there. And if they leave, they might not even say goodbye, right? I've had the most amazing stories. The, the funniest one was a long, a long distance trucking company. Uh, they found that increasingly their Xer employees, when they didn't want to work anymore, they just haul that big 18-wheeler to the side of the road, get out, leave the keys in the car, and they'd hitch a ride. That's it. They had to install radio chips in the car so they could, in the truck so they could identify them and send someone to pick them up. Or another great example, in, in San Francisco, there's a new company called, My, uh, uh, it's called MyLackey.com. MyLackey, right? It's okay, I'll be your lackey as long as it's me. It's my, it's my dot com, it's my business. Work is a means to an end, not an end in itself. That's what they got against all these boomers. Higher productivity means, means doing more for less, not doing, you know, again, boomers are into Six Sigma and, you know, total quality and all this stuff. Relax, relax. You're always working at your tennis game. <laughs> what counts is my performance, not my attitude. And no sane person trusts the organization. And this has a lot to do with their attitudes towards Social Security reform and pension reform. You can't trust the establishment to take care of any of these promises. That's why Xers are so into property. I need it. I've got to own it. It's like my body and my cash. I know where that is. But don't ask me to trust anything else. Xers in retirement, well, we don't know. This is going to be a while. Of course, their attitude is we build our own safety nets. You know the, the Prudential changed their ad? Instead of, you know, uh, 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 you know, sharing the strength of the rock is now for Xers own a piece of the rock. I like that. That's a, you know, that's a very different attitude. Right? Retirement benefits, small. We think they're going to be small, at least official benefits. They'll have to provide on their uh, own. We think that they will inherit uh, high, high retirement ages once boomers are done and relationship with family and retirement close but separating. Of course, that's long in the future. Um, I never said about Xers and light bulbs, right? How many Xers does it take to put in a light bulb? Only one. Just screw it, right? 